No, my hockey, my welcome back to the breakdown on the road from Leon. Great to have you joining us for what has been uh, an, a couple of unbelievable weeks here in France. Mills Molina, it's your time to be unleashed. The fanfare around that match, I'm talking about Ireland and South Africa at Stade de France. The All Blacks path has now become clear, but let's talk about this one first. How daunting is the task coming up against those two? World number one and world number two. Oh, particularly in the way they sort of the, the played. I mean, the All Blacks and also the French have always known this was going to be, um, you know, a huge quarterfinal once these two teams have sort of played. It was always going to be the case. But the way they came out, the support that you mentioned, I mean, we've been down here in Lyon and there's just so many sort of Irish supporters along with the, the Wallaby um, supporters as well. It's just shaping up you know, to that business end. I'm, I'm so looking forward to it because the intensity went up, but also the accuracy and, and the pressure, Jeff, for, for both teams, that was certainly on as well. Look, Is that was... a, a preview of the final? No, because we're not in it, Kirsty. Yeah. We can't lot, talk like lot, that in the break. A lot breakdown. of people are saying that. It's well, a pre these two teams will meet again. Look, There's only one a, way look, they can meet again. Look, we've just seen that, that when it comes to a situation where it's a knockout game, and that's what it, essentially what it was last night for Wales and Australia, pressure yeah. changes the whole context of everything. And so don't get me wrong, this was a great contest and we're seeing plenty of it, but I think it more importantly gives you a great indication, JK, of what it's going to take to win a Rugby World Cup. And the fact that both of these two teams, once again, went into a game and they turned down points. And I can't see that happening when you get to a genuine knockout game. All this was a positioning game, that's all this was. Yeah. And the fact now, what we expect, and we've still got a job to do against Italy. We can take nothing for granted. They're a Six Nations side, but I think we now know what South Africa and Ireland are absolutely capable of when it comes down to playing under pressure. And I think both teams showed, I think showed a lot in that game, JK. Yeah, look, I think it was a confirmation of the ratings. You know, we've said that Ireland is the best coming in. Had they really been tested? Yes and no, but that was their big test. And they are the number one side to knock over. And we've got to knock them over. Um, I thought it was probably a step backwards for South Africa. I think we saw some weakness in their game. Um, which I think is a good thing. Obviously, they're kicking, they need to sort out. They left a few points on the patch. But it's going to be that. If New Zealand's play Ireland, it's going to be that type of match. It's going to be close. You're going to have to take your opportunities and you're going to have to win those special moments. But we are good enough. We are good enough. I'm smiling right now because it's him that's criticised South Africa. Did you criticise them or just took a step back? No, I said, it won't be me that's copping it. I said they took, they took a step back. Like they took us to be, they That's lost. enough for them, for they the South African them, fans. They, they, yeah, exactly. But that's okay. I mean, and I tend to agree. They took a step backwards. They looked under pressure at times. They didn't look as confident as they have in the past. And that's pressure, right? Think, have we? Have no, we? I don't have think we that confident? I, I don't think that worries South Africa too much. You know, I, I yeah. think they're comfortable within their, their game. I think they're comfortable in the fact they we've lost the pool game, but they've still got the confidence to know that they, they left a lot of opportunities out there. They brought on guys possibly a little bit early. I, I agree with you. I think it was all about positioning, you know, in terms of where they get to. Both sides know who they're going to come up against in terms of the quarterfinals, and so it's about getting to the quarterfinals. But I think in terms of where South Africa sit and the confidence they have within their environment, I don't, I don't think that would have phased them a lot. I think it's actually going to make them even better. And Mills, we spoke yesterday, but you don't think Ireland will phase the All Blacks? No, I, I, don't, I, I reckon the All Blacks have got so much fire in their bellies after... The Irish, you know, the Irish series win. I, I think, technically, um, we, if, if the Ireland, the Irish team, don't get me wrong, they're the most clinical team at the moment in this Rugby World Cup, but I think there's enough there in the All Blacks. If we go back to the level that we started the championship in, that we can match them, in fact, even better than them. The key to the All Blacks now is when they turn to a game that's a lot slower, you know, and frustrate the All Blacks with set piece and kicking game. Can we hang in there and stay stay with the Irish? Because the Irish are prepared to do that. They they can change up, they can manipulate, they can play our game, but they can also play a slow game that frustrates other teams. And that's the key of the All Blacks. How can they not stay frustrated and stick in it? I totally agree. Three key players, absolutely key players for those quarterfinals is Ben O'Keefe, Wayne Barnes and Yako Piper, believe it or not. Because when those three ref there's more rhythm in the game. I thought Ben O'Keefe was amazing. I mean, this is a tight game, yeah. but it was all over the place. Then I thought Wayne Barnes refed really well in that game last night, let it flow. We need referees that are going to let it flow because if we get slowed down, it's not good for our game. The other thing that the All Blacks 
will be working on is under pressure this Irish side make the right decisions. Mm. What happened to Australia? You know, they didn't take that three points. So this Irish side under pressure make the right decisions. When I said I saw a few clinks in the South African armour the other night, it was that. Under pressure, I thought Ireland were better. Are they any less mills? No. Will it worry them? No, they'll learn from it. That's why I think the All Blacks have gone away and it'll be that close. Ireland lost their first five lineouts though. I mean, against the Springboks, there were six lineouts, the first six lineouts. So they've got there's some chinks in their armour as well. I mean, if you look at this contest and you look at the way that South Africa actually tried to play, they actually tried to counterattack yeah, a lot more. Uh, yeah. Damien Filenza was awesome yeah. with ball in hand. I mean, he got beat the first player quite often. And what it did confirm to me is, though, it is so hard to score tries in the, against the top sides. Yeah. You can get in positions yeah, to but score tries. that's the problem with that game, right? Yeah, but, that, that. but I'm going to go deep into that maybe later on in this tournament because it's, it's incredibly frustrating when you're seeing quality play until you get to the last five metres and no one get a good across the line. Did you see uh, the Argentinian Samoan game? That was, if, if the other night was the best game, that was possibly the worst game I've ever seen. Yeah, I, I, right? I, I, I was And I felt sorry started. for my Samoan brothers because... They are way better than that, yeah. but it was disjointed. Argentina were terrible, Samoa were terrible, and I sat there well, thinking, wow. But Australia have just suffered it as well. If you can't scrum, you cannot have success at a Rugby World Cup. If you cannot hold your own at scrum time, and that's where other teams are finding it difficult, challenging. That's where last night the Wallabies... So for me, that's what I think Ireland and South Africa... It was, it was like a... It was like a... It was solid for the first, you know, 80, so 60 minutes of that game. It didn't shift. JK, you talked about three key players for the quarterfinals, but these three key players for Ireland that have come out of New Zealand, Jamison Gibson-Park, James Lowe, Bundy Aki, man of the match performance again, Gareth Anscombe as well for Wales was man of the match. Would any of these guys be in the current All Blacks setup? Would they have made the All Blacks mills or did they make the right decisions to go overseas and now they're superstars? Well, they purely have made the right decision. And I guess this is the problem that we've got. And, you know, you guys have spoken about that with, with Timmy, the fact that, you know, our, um, I suppose, the guys coming through, um, how do we keep them? You've got to take your head off. And it worries me because those guys have gone over there. They've become better players. Like, let's, don't, let's not shy, get shy around it. The, obviously, the development system that they've got in the north is a lot better than what we've got down in the, in the south because those guys weren't even making, you know, the, the, the 23 in some of those super rugby sides. And now look what they are. They're actually becoming world-class players. So what worries me a bit there is, you know, how, how is our development in New Zealand? Now we've got an issue that we've got to look after the Australians. We've been fighting at it for, for so long. You know, when is this now the time for our board to go, or our union to say, well, actually, remember this time, remember this time, Australia? It's about time we've got to come together because it's a worrying sign when guys like that go over yeah. and become much better players than what they did when they were in New Zealand. I, I actually think it's the tournament, Mills. I, I, I agree with you, they get better, but I think they get better through tougher tournaments. I think we've really got to look at what our tournament is because, you know, I, I coached Jamison, um, he went over and he is, he had all the fundamentals there, but now under pressure he's a, he's a very good player and I think it comes down to their competition and also the Six Nations is more in the test arena. You keep harping on, and you do this a bit, um, you keep harping on about taking three points, right? In the Six Nations, you take your three points, whereas a lot of the Souths, you know, were kicking to the corner, going to the line-outs like the Australians did, and then they threw that pie. I mean, that was a critical time in the game. So I think it's the competition we need to look at. We need to go, is our competition now preparing these guys? And they go overseas and they get better through that. 